And hello everybody and welcome to the Movie Pit Podcast. I am your host Christian. Thank you very much for joining me on the podcast today. We have quite a podcast for you guys this week. Uh, we have some pretty big news items to drop. We got some uh, t- two real big movie trailers. We had a bunch of movie trailers come out this week as well. Uh, but we also got, of course, the movies that are coming out this weekend. Uh, so let's get right to it. I do want to mention, though, before we start getting into the movie news, there was a lot of that. There was a, uh, a, a a big amount of movie news, but a lot of it was a lot of casting tidbits. So a lot of that uh, little casting tidbit stuff is up on the Facebook page. If you want to go check uh, a lot of the smaller stuff out, just for time's sake, I didn't want to keep mentioning like all these little brief little casting updates uh, and stuff like that. So we will talk about some of them here on the podcast, but uh, a lot of uh, a lot of the casting updates that came out this week uh, are up on the Facebook page. Which is facebook.com slash movie pit. That's facebook.com slash movie pit. Uh, link will be in the bio if you want to get in the bio. Uh, link will be in the description slash show notes area if you want to go check those out. I'm going to go check the page out and uh, go look at that. Well, there's some pretty impressive stuff over there, casting uh, casting update wise. So I uh, highly recommend you go check out the Facebook page. But let's get to this week's movie news items. Of course, the first news item that we're going to talk about is, of course, movie news items that came out last week after the podcast went up. Uh, the big news item that came out after the podcast went up last week, actually came out over the weekend, is that the Edge of Tomorrow sequel has a title, and it confirms that Emily Blunt will return. Now, Edge of Tomorrow took everyone by surprise back in 2014. Uh, the film has found a following whether people, whether it was people that saw it in theaters or whether it was people that saw it late. But nonetheless, Edge of Tomorrow, by a lot of people, was considered a very good sci-fi movie. And it is. It is a very good sci-fi movie. So last year, uh, it talks began that a sequel was going to happen. Director Doug Lyman was going to come back. He was going to direct Tom Cruise, who was also going to return and, and produce the film. But uh, Christopher McQuarrie was also going to come back to write. The only uh, question mark surrounding the film was whether Emily Blunt was going to return. Now, with uh, Lyman's new movie coming out, The Wall, which we'll talk about uh, a little bit later in the podcast, Lyman was asked a question about uh, the sequel to Edge of Tomorrow, which he confirmed is happening and confirmed that Emily Blunt will return. Now, here's what he said. He said, quote, we have an amazing story. It's incredible. Way better than the first. And I obviously love the first film. It will be called Live, Die, Repeat and Repeat. Tom is excited about it. Emily Blunt. Emily Blunt is excited about it. The big question is just when we'll do it, but it's not an if, it's a when. So, uh, obviously we've got the title, Live, Die, Repeat, and Repeat, which is kind of not the best title in the world, uh, but uh, I, I per- personally I probably would have just gone with Live, Die, Repeat, which was essentially kind of the logo, uh, not the logo, the um, the kind of like the, the tag for the film, a lot of the Blu-ray and DVD um covers had the had live die repeat on it and then it had like very small print edge of tomorrow so it kind of probably just wouldn't have made sense to call the film live die repeat but um you know whatever uh but of course the big thing here is that emily blunt is returning she was a very big highlight in the first film and i'm very glad to see her come back for uh, for another go of course plot details are being kept under wraps there's no production date just yet as you just heard lyman or not her, but you, you, I read the quote of him saying that you know it's not it's a it's not a question of if it's a question of when. Obviously, people are very busy. Tom Cruise is probably about to go on a press run for the Mummy. Uh, Emily Blunt is um, I think she's still filming Mary Poppins Returns, so I we'll have to wait a little bit on that. All right, so let's move on to the trailers in our trailer talk segment. Like I mentioned, we had a. It was, it was a pretty good week for trailers that came out uh, this week. So the first trailer that came out, well, not the first trailer that came out, but um, this one actually just came out recently for the Reese Witherspoon comedy Home Again. It's it's, uh, it's, it's Witherspoon. She's, um, she has just gone through, I believe, a divorce in, in the, at the beginning of the film, and she meets uh, three inspiring filmmakers and decides to let them live in her guest home. Uh, and uh, things get a little complicated. She starts to um, kind of cause a, a stir with some of the guys, and uh, her ex-husband shows up not helping matters. So um, there's that. I, I mean, that I didn't get a lot from the, from the, uh, from the trailer, 
personally, but um, there, there's, there's that. A uh, new trailer for Cars 3 came out. I didn't end up watching it. I knew, I know it was there, um, but it, there, there is a new trailer for Cars 3. Um, if you want to go check that out, I don't know. I just, I guess I'm not. I'm, I'm a little excited for Cars, but at the same time, it's like, uh, I don't know. I just, it, it's not the best of the Pixar movies, but we'll, we'll see. A, uh, a new trailer came out for, or the first trailer, I should say, for A24's new horror thriller film, Woodshock. Not Woodstock, Woodshock. It's uh, Kirsten Dunst. It's a very, uh, it's a very kind of uh, dreamy-esque kind of trailer. Uh, it looks like it's, like something has, something's going on. So Kirsten Dunst is, uh, is this woman who, uh, her mother dies in the film and... And she ends up taking this weird drug that she doesn't know. We don't know what it is either. We just know that she's taking something, and stuff starts going on. Uh, it's a it's a ve- it's a very good looking film. Uh, the cinematography in this trailer is amazing. Uh, so um, and this should be no surprise because the the movie is actually directed by the production designers on Black Swan. So that's that's kind of cool. Uh, so there was that, uh, a new trailer for It. It's a very brief trailer. It almost kind of works more as a, more of a scene, uh, trailer rather than like a movie trailer. You know, there's so, it's in like extended, it's in in the, the trailer shows a a scene rather, you know, those trailers show like scenes rather than, you know, breaking everything up. That's kind of what this, this, uh, this is. And it focuses on the, the losers club, the young cast, the young kids that are going to be tortured by, uh, by Pennywise. It's it's really cool. It it's, it shows you know uh, them personally char- uh, character wise, and it's it's a really cool uh, little thing to build up uh, for another for a new trailer. The movie comes out in September, so I'm pretty sure we'll probably get a new trailer uh, sometime during the summer or more deeper into the summer, I guess. Uh, so the uh, the next trailer that came out is the new Wonder Woman, the final trailer for Wonder Woman. Diana. Fighting does not make you a hero. What if I promise to be careful? Just a shield then. Diana. No sharp edges. Be careful of mankind, Diana. They do not deserve you. You've told me this story. What is this place? Who are you people? We are the bridge to a greater understanding. Right. What is your mission? Well, here's the thing. You are in more danger than you think. The boys in the trenches called her Dr. Poison. Millions would die. The war would never end. I'm going, Mother. If you choose to leave, you may never return. Who will I be if I stay? We'll come. To the war. Well, technically the war is that way, but we got to go this way first. How can a woman fight in this? Who is this young woman? She's my... uh, And, um... Diana, Princess of the Mystery. Prince, Diana Prince. believe that this war should stop. Help me stop it right now. What are you? You will soon find out. It's uh, it's pretty I mean you get we get a lot more of the story here. Uh we get to see a uh, bigger highlight of uh, one at least probably one of the villains in in the movie Dr. Poison. Um but we get a lot cool a lot of more no uh, <laughs> a lot of cool new shots is what, I want, is what I'm trying to say uh, it's, it's really cool it's, it's a really good trailer uh, if you're already pumped up for Wonder Woman this is probably just going to pump you up even more uh, it comes out in a few weeks so obviously we'll be talking a lot more about Wonder Woman but as for this trailer this final trailer not too bad not too shabby not, not too shabby but uh, the biggest trailer of the week that came out is of course the first trailer for Blade Runner 2049 
every civilization was built off the back of a disposable workforce. But I can only make so many. Shh. Happy birthday. There is an order to things. That's what we do here. We keep order. The world is built on a wall that separates kind. Tell either side there's no wall. You bought a war. You're a cop. I did your job once. I was good at it. I know. What do you want? I want to ask you some questions. The key to the future is finally unearthed. Bring it to me. They know you're here. told you, you're special. Your story isn't over yet. There's still a page left. This trailer's pretty good. Uh, I haven't seen the first Blade Runner in a very long time, so I don't know um, how my gauge is. Uh, but just basing everything off this trailer, it looks pretty cool. The cinema again, the cinematography is great. You got a lot of cool shots. It looks like it's gonna be this really great film, not just like a, a big action movie, but it's gonna be a very kind of kind of dramatic moments in there as well. Uh, kind of a mystery element to to it. Uh, I'm I'm I, you know I'm I my my excitement for for Blade Runner twenty forty nine isn't as huge as other people's just because I haven't seen the first film in a long time so my gauge is a little off uh, but just basing everything off this trailer I think it could probably be pretty cool um, so I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to 20 Blade Runner 2049 uh, so there you go so those are all the trailers that came out I, they're all going to be down below in the description slash show notes area if you want to go check those out I uh, highly recommend you do especially that Blade Runner trailer and that woman one Wonder Woman trailer. So, uh, so yeah. Alright, so let's get to this week's news items. Like I mentioned, there was a lot of, uh, there was a lot of, like, these small little casting tidbits that, that came out. A, a lot of that's gonna be up on the Facebook page, uh, just for the sake of time and the sake of flow. And a lot of the stuff is also, like, a lot of the, a lot of that stuff was also, like, all, all these people are in talks. A lot, of these people, a lot of those movies didn't have, like, production dates yet. So, all, if you want to know a lot more about all that, uh, a lot more of uh, those casting tidbits, you can go to the Facebook page. We've got to talk about just uh, got to talk about just a few of them here uh, to start off. Uh, the first one is Steve McQueen is going to direct a Tupac documentary. Now, Steve McQueen, ha- Steve McQueen has signed on to direct a feature-length documentary about the late uh, about the life of the late icon Tupac Shakur. Uh, Steve McQueen, for those of you guys who don't know, directed Twelve Years a Slave. Uh, he has closed the deal with the uh, Shakur Estate Trustee Tom Wally and Amur Entertainment, which was a company that was created by Tupac's recently deceased mother. Um, McQueen released a statement saying, "Few saying, quote, few if any shine brighter than Tupac Shakur. I look forward to working closely with the family to tell the unvarnished story of this talented man. Uh, now, of course, Tupac is one of the biggest names in music, whether if, you, whether if you've i uh, never heard any of his songs you at least have heard of the name Tupac. And uh, obviously he he, uh, he was uh, fatally shot uh, very right, kind of almost right at the peak of his career 
Um, and uh, he was the first solo hip hop artist to be inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Uh, solo hip hop artist. So uh, he he has left uh, m- many to be influenced by him and uh, and everything else. So this is pretty cool. It's everything's still in the early stages. Uh, it looks like they will have full access to his music library, which is kind of unheard of a little bit. But uh, so we'll see how this turns out. This is of course the second Tupac film in uh, in in the little bit in the works because we have the Tupac biopic coming out later this month. I'm sorry, not later this month, uh, and next month, I should say, uh, called All Eyes on Me, and we'll talk about that, of course, uh, when we uh, get to the release date on that. So let's move on to the next movie news item. This one kind of, this this one struck, this one got to me, because as an English major, this one got to me, so I want to talk about this, but this actually sounds pretty cool with the people involved. So Michael Rooker will reunite with Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer director, on a good man is hard to find. Now, Rooker, of course, can currently be seen in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, where he does a tremendous job. But he will have a reunion with John McNaughton, I think that's how you say his name, uh, who directed him in, like, like I just mentioned, Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer, for the film adaptation of Flattery O'Connor's story, A Good Man is Hard to Find. For those unfamiliar with the story, uh, it follows a family as they run into a group of criminals. Uh, the story then takes its focus on two of the characters, one from from the family, just known as Grandmother, and the other from the group of criminals known as just the Misfit. That's what they end up calling the characters. Uh, and it does look like Rooker will play the character of the Misfit, who is the kind of like the main kind of leader there. Um, first, if you haven't read the story, I highly recommend you do. I had to read that story, A Good Man Is Hard to Find, a good number of times. Being an English major. I had to read that a good number of times, and I've come to know know the story very well. It's tough to read due to the material, but it's it's a great read nonetheless. It's a very great character piece nonetheless. So when it comes to the team, Rooker and uh, McNaughton have broken into the scene together. Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer, which is a a very, very talked about horror. If you ask any of your horror movie fans, and you ask them, have you seen Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer?, Kind of depending on how big of a horror movie they are, horror movie fan they are, they they have probably heard of it. Uh, so that movie has a very very big fan following, and to see these two guys work together again is probably going to make a lot of them very very happy. So uh, McNaughton has also gone on to direct films like Wild Things, which of course I'm pretty sure a lot of people know. The last one he directed was back in 2013 called The Harvest, and of course Rooker has gone on to do many, many things, uh, of course Yondu, and of course Merle Dixon and The Walking Dead, and amongst uh, a lot of other projects as well. The film will be written by Benedict Fitzgerald, who did some uh, script work on The Passion of the Christ, but no word yet on when the film will go into production, but I am very eager to see how they bring this story to life, just because I've We've read it so many times now. I just want, I don't know. I just kind of this is kind of more of just a personal little story for for me to include, because you know, again, being an English major, reading that story so many times, kind of interesting to see uh, how that plays. And then Michael Rooker, of course. I mean, come on, can't go wrong with Michael Rooker. All right, so let's move on uh, to the next casting uh, news. Cliff Curtis has joined the cast of the uh, the Avatar sequels. I almost said the Avengers sequels. The Avatar sequels. Uh, Curtis, who can currently be seen on AMC's Fear the Walking Dead, has joined the Avatar sequels. Curtis will play a character named Tonawari, if I'm pronouncing that wrong. Probably. Uh, the leader of the Reef Clan called the Metakina. Again, who knows if I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, this goes along with what uh, director James Cameron said about the sequels, saying that the sequels to Avatar will feature more of the underwater world of the planet of Pandora. So, there you go. Uh, of course, this casting has raised some uh, raised some questions about his role in the AMC series, so we'll see what kind of happens with that. Uh, but Curtis will now join the returning cast of Sam Worthington, Zoe Saldana, Sigourney Weaver, and Stephen Lang. Somehow. Uh, production on Avatar 2 will start next year for its December 18th, 2020 release, with the following films being released 2021, 2024, and 2025. Because that's what, that's what's going to happen. Um, all December releases, of course, as well. Uh, Cliff Curtis, if you don't watch um, Fear the Walking Dead, uh, he's been in a bunch of stuff. And he's one of those guys that has been in a lot of things that when you start seeing his resume, you're like, oh my god, he's in all these movies? 
Uh, so he's been in films like he's been in films like Three Kings, Training Day, Sunshine, uh, Live Free or Die Hard, and The Last Airbender. He's been in a lot of stuff. And again, if you look at his resume, you're just like, holy, holy crap, this guy's been in a lot of things. Uh, so you will recognize his face once once you see him. Uh, so let's move on to the next news item. Sylvester Stallone and Jackie Chan are going to team up uh, for the first time on a film called Ex Baghdad. Uh, so two, of course, again, uh, two of the big, I mean, let's face it, two of the biggest action stars uh, from the 90s, and I guess you can say now as well are getting together for a movie for the first time. This, it's it's kind of crazy that this is the first time they've gotten together. Um, they will team up for the film Ex Baghdad, which centers on two ex-Special Forces soldiers who must escort a group of civilians along Baghdad's, quote, highway of death uh, to the safety of the Green Zone. Uh, the film also has a director in negotiations in Scott Wall. Uh, Wall was a stuntman for many years, on films like Speed and Batman Forever and Sam Raimi Spider Man, Triple X, just to name a few. Uh, but he made his directorial debut uh, with Act of Valor. If you remember that film, he also went on to direct the Need for Speed movie, which isn't as bad as many people say it is. Uh, just want to put that out there. I actually quite enjoyed Need for Speed for what it was. Uh, but he also has another film called Six Below, which hasn't come out yet, uh, but, he's, but he has that under his belt as well. So he's in negotiations to direct that film. No word yet on when the film will go into production, but with a director already in negotiations. And again, two of the biggest action names in the business. Sylvester Stallone, Rambo, of all people, and Rocky, and Jackie Chan, and all the roles he's played. I'm pretty sure we'll, we'll, find, we'll find out a lot more about this, uh, about this film sooner rather than later. All right, uh, so let's move on to the next news item, which is another uh, casting tidbit uh, for The Strangers 2, uh, the long-gestured sequel to the 2008 horror thriller The Strangers is finally moving forward and has casted three names. Reports have uh, reports say and have that Lewis Pullman, Bailey Madison, and Christina, Christina Hendricks have all signed on for the sequel. The film will be directed by Johannes Roberts, who has directed the upcoming 47 Meters Down, and will be written by the, f- uh, the first film's writers, Brian Bertino and Ben Cotti. I think that's how you say his name. Uh, the film will follow a new family that is terrorized by three masked figures, of course from the first film, and an abandoned trailer park during a cross-country road trip gone wrong. I was a huge fan of the first film. The first film, for those of you guys who don't remember, Liv Tyler, Scott Speedman, uh, they're in their house, and they suddenly get attacked by three people in masks. Um, I was a huge fan of that film, and it's one of those films that kind of just stuck, stood with me and uh, and stayed with me for a while. And I've been, you know, ever since that movie was released, you know, there was news items that, oh, the sequel's going to get made, uh, the sequel's going to start production next year, and it's been delayed, and all, and all this kind of stuff. So seeing it um, finally moving forward is is really, really cool. Uh, of course, we'll have to wait to see if the wait was worth it, but there you go. Uh, the cast, as for the cast, uh, Pullman is kind of the, the newcomer, really, of the group. Uh, he's worked on a lot of short films. He does have a few feature films under his belt. Um, one of them is The Ballad of Lefty Brown, which is a western, and the other is Aftermath, which is a drama thriller with uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger, because, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger does a lot of dramas now, but uh, that's the, he was in that. Uh, Madison, which is the youngest of the cast uh, that's been that's been casted so far, uh, she's worked on uh, big films like Bridge of Terabithia, Disney Channel's uh, Wizards of Waverly Place. She was in Don't Be Afraid of the Dark. She played the little girl in that movie. Uh, ABC's Once Upon a Time. Uh, she's currently on two shows, uh, Hallmark's The Good Witch and Freeform's The Fosters. And, of course, Christina Hendricks from uh, from Mad Men. She's also been in Drive and The Neon Demon. Uh, she was in Bad Santa 2, and she was recently in, uh, in Fist Fight. Uh, she's also on the TV show Another Period, from what I saw. Uh, so, uh, so yeah. So, Strangers Two actually starts filming at the end of the month, which is pretty, uh, which is pretty cool, if you ask me. Uh, so, there you go. All right, let's move on. I think we're done with the casting tidbits, at least for just a little bit. Uh, so, let's move on to some other news items. The live-action Beauty and the Beast movie is now the highest-grossing PG film ever in the United States. 
and it's not really, I guess, too surprising considering, you know, how much money it made uh, when it opened at the box office and its staying power in, in the top five. Uh, Disney has announced that its live-action adaptation of Beauty and the Beast has become the highest-grossing PG-rated movie of all time, earning $487.7 million. The film has passed Finding Dory, which previously held the record, at a measly $486.3 million. <laughs> Right? I mean, come on. Uh, but it doesn't hold the record overseas because Frozen still has that record. Uh, and I didn't put down how much money it was, but again, it's probably just a measly amount of money. Right? I mean, come on. Um, Beauty and the Beast is currently also the 8th highest grossing movie in the U.S. overall and 11th in the world. Obviously, the year's not over yet, so we'll come back at that at the end of the year. Of course, uh, the film will earn a lot more money as it will most likely stay in theaters for at least a few more weeks, but it probably won't uh, be crossing the billion dollar mark anytime. So it will make $500 million probably by its uh, by the end of its theater run for sure. But we'll, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll see uh, what happens with that. I, personally, I have not seen Beauty and the Beast yet. Uh, and a lot of part, and the big part of me does not want to watch it because I love the animated film so much. Um, and I've been hearing, I've been hearing good things about it, but I've also been hearing mixed things about it. I just, I don't know. At this point, there's so many other films that I, I want to go watch in theaters. I'm probably not going to be able to get to watch Beauty and the Beast. I'll, I'll watch it when it comes out on home video or, you know, on like Cinemax or Stars or something. But, uh, but yeah, I don't know. I'm not hating on it. I mean, if you watched it and you liked it, I mean, great, you know, but I just, I don't know, just, I, it wasn't something I was gonna, gonna go out and, and pursue. Uh, so let's move on to the next movie news item. Ridley Scott says that Alien Covenant, the Alien Covenant sequel will start filming in 14 months. Keep that in mind, Alien Covenant has not even come out yet, and Ridley Scott is already looking ahead for the sequel. Now, Scott has previously said that Covenant is only one of many films he still has in store for the future of this franchise, and even said last year, when outlets visited the set when he was filming Alien Covenant, that he was working on a sequel. Now, once again, speaking with IGN UK, Scott revealed that he is working on the script, saying, quote, We're writing a sequel now, as we speak. I will be filming that within 14 months. So that's a little over a year. It should be noted that a sequel to Alien Covenant has not been officially greenlit, so probably just settled out, and it's not necessarily guaranteed. I'm pretty sure uh, Alien Covenant will make a considerable amount of money at the box office, but is that enough for a sequel? We have to wait and see. Now, when it comes to the 14 months part, that's a really big turnaround, unless, you know, really Scott was, you know... You know, just keeping some. It's like, oh, you just you just leave that set as it is. I'll come back to it next year. That's that's a pretty big, uh, that's a pretty big statement to to say. Uh, again, considering the film has not come out everywhere yet, and considering that we don't know how well the film will do at the box office just yet, so we have to take that into account. Now, early reviews have come out. I haven't read any in them, but from from what the get from what the headlines I've been reading or that I gather from, it looks like it's 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 a it's going back to the fine form that we know that we love from the first two Alien movies. There's still some missteps missteps, for at least from again just the headlines that I've been, that I've read. Uh, but we'll have to wait and see um, what happens uh, when the movie comes out. Uh, obviously, I will, I'm excited to go see Alien Covenant. I will talk about it here on the podcast. So. Um, we'll see what happens when it comes out next week. I'm sure we'll hear more about uh, sequel talk next week as well, or the week after. All right, so let's move on to the next movie news item. This is a project I haven't talked about, uh, mainly because um, at first uh, there was uh, no no real movie news, no real substantial news to talk about because the plot details were kept under wraps, uh, and apparently there was all these casting happening and they all just slipped past my radar which somehow uh but the futuristic thriller hotel artemis is gathering a pretty impressive cast uh the film will be uh will be the dictor- the dictorial debut i can't speak now the dictorial debut of drew pierce the writer of movies like iron man 3 and mission impossible rogue nation 
Uh, he also wrote the script that will uh, be set in the future and follows a nurse who runs an underground hospital in Los Angeles where criminals go to get stitched up and fixed up. But things go awry when one patient lands in the hospital with the hopes of assassinating another. Uh, so that sounds, I mean, that's a pretty solid, you know, log line and an idea for a film. Uh, the film has over, the film, and this is when I first started hearing about the project, Jodie Foster has, had, was the first person to be cast, and then she is going to be playing the nurse that runs this, uh, I, well, I guess it's probably called the Hotel Artemis. Uh, so she's playing the nurse that's going to run the on, underground hospital. And then they've been casting people like Dave Bautista, uh, Sofia Bontella. She was, she's going to be in The Mummy. She's playing the, the mummy character. She was also in Kingsman, The Secret Service. And Jeff Goldblum, of all people, has also joined the, the movie. But uh, the reason why I'm talking about it now is because they've added three more names. They've added Jenny Slate, uh, Charlie Day, and Sterling K. Brown. But there's no word yet on who any of them, besides Jodie Foster, there's no word on who all these people are playing. So we don't know if they're playing people that work in the hospital or people that are uh, the hitmen or whoever. Uh, so we don't know what's going on. And th this is a pretty interesting cast. I mean, you got Jenny Slade in there, you got Charlie Day, you got Sterling K. Brown, Dave Bautista, uh, Sophia Bontella, and Jeff Goldblum, and Jodie Foster of all people. I mean, that's a pretty, that's a pretty impressive cast and a name and a who's who uh, of people. But uh, it, this sounds pretty cool. This sounds pretty interesting. I, I'm this is again this is something that I that I knew about, but for some reason I just like everything just passed by me. I didn't even notice what was going on with this movie until now. And this movie has kind of jumped to my, my, uh, my anticipated list. I kind of just want to see what kind of happens from, uh, from here. So, uh, we'll, obviously I'll keep you guys updated on anything that comes out from, from that. All right. So let's move on to the biggest news items of the week. The last two movie news items of the week, Anya Tyler joy and Maisie Williams are set to star in new mutants it's official folks <laughs> after year after a year basically pretty much a year yeah of rumors anya tyler joy from the witch and split and Maisie williams from game of thrones of course Arya stark have officially signed on to star in the x-men spin-off film new mutants the film will be directed by joss boone who directed the faults in our stars he's also attached to direct uh stephen king's ad the stephen king adaptation of stand he also co-wrote the film as well, and it will focus on a younger group of mutants and their adventures. For fans of the comics and that know the whole new mutants thing, the mutants that will be included in the film are Moonstar, Wolfsbane, Sunspot, Cannonball, and Magic. They will also include the mutant uh, Warlock, but um, it won't include Charles Xavier, played by James McAvoy, because he was rumored to be attached to the film, and at first, uh, when this mo when this news broke out, it said that he was going to be part of the film, but there's been reports coming out since then that that's no longer the case. It's still early, so take that as you will. Uh, so Taylor Joy will play Magic, whose powers include sorcery, obviously, and using teleportation uh, discs to travel from one location to the other, and even between dimensions, including a place called Limbo, uh, and happens to be the sister of the X-Men Colossus. That's pretty cool. Uh, but she also has some other intriguing stories in the comics that I won't get into just in case they somehow delve into that in the film. Uh, Williams, she will play Wolfsbane. Uh, she struggles to uh, reconcile with her religious beliefs because her powers actually have her transforming into a wolf, which is pretty cool. Uh, the two have been eyed for these roles, especially Williams, uh, for... Oh, for a while now, and last year, talks got real. Like the the rumor, the rumor mill, and the talks started getting really serious. But uh, they couldn't do anything because the movie hadn't really officially been greenlit yet. And it, it was finally officially greenlit greenlit earlier this year. And now, of course, talks became more serious, and now they've been casted. In addition to Anya Tyler Joy and Maisie Williams, Fox is quote making serious efforts to find ethnically appropriate actors for Moonstar, who is Native American, and Sunspot, 
who is South American to fill those roles, which is pretty pretty cool. Because obviously, you know, you got here we got the whole whitewashing thing locked down. But for characters like for characters like these, you know, there's obviously that the fan base is very strong. So I don't think you want to mess with that a little bit. I think, yeah, I think you don't want to mess with that. Uh, some new mutants will start is aiming to start filming. I should say uh, this July. So they, that's that's pretty close. Uh, which means we'll be probably be hearing a lot more casting updates soon. The film does have a release date for April 13th, 2018. Take that into account for what you will. This is pretty cool. Uh, Maisie Williams, we already know what she's capable of on Game of Thrones. I know she's done other stuff outside Game of Thrones, I just haven't personally seen it. But what I've seen from her in Game of Thrones, that's enough for me. Uh, as for Anya Tyler-Joy, she is just her star is just like on the rise and it, it's it's well worth it uh i've only seen her in the witch and split and from and just seeing her in those two things is kind of enough for me because she she has a tremendous career ahead of her if she chooses the right projects and uh this is i'm i'm very impressed from what i've seen to her from her and i, I think uh it's a name that we should start learning very very well uh, so this is pretty cool. Alright, so let's move on to the final news item of the day and of the podcast, at least at the time of this recording, of course. But it doesn't matter what other big news item comes out, because this is pretty much the big one. Hellboy is getting a reboot, a rated R reboot, with David Harbour in talks to lead and Neil Marshall in talks to direct. Now, Millennium Films are in negotiation. They've uh, released uh, the Expendables movies and Olympus Has Fallen and a bunch of other stuff. Those are kind of the big movies that they've been releasing. They're in negotiations with producers Larry Gordon and Lloyd Levin to reboot Hellboy. Yes, that Hellboy, if you're wondering. The one that was directed by Guillermo del Toro that starred Ron Perlman. Yes, that Hellboy. Uh, The deal... Uh, would not only relaunch the property with a rated R rating, but also bring two names, David Harbour and Neil Marshall. Now, for those of you unfamiliar with the Hellboy character or movies, which I recommend you watch the movies, uh, it's based off a popular series of comics by Mike Mignola about a demon raised by a professor who is raised to work for good and fight supernatural creatures for an organization called Bureau of Paranormal Research and Defense. Guillermo del Toro directed the first two movies. There's only been, there's only two movies. I mean, there's two live-action movies. There is animated movies about Hellboy. Uh, with, I believe, Ron Perlman voicing the character. Like, I could be wrong about that, but I'm pretty sure that's the case. Uh, but he played the title character in the live-action movies as well. And even though there was a third film always talked about, the film never came together. I believe it was a f- I believe it was last month that we talked about how Guillermo del Toro went in to... Um, to to pitch one more time the third film that he wanted and the studio didn't want to do the film because of uh Dottoro wanted a bigger budget and they were like we're not comfortable with that uh and nothing ever ha- and, you know obviously nothing ever happened from that and they I guess decided to go the reboot route so there is right now the rumor that the film will be a darker and more gruesome version version I should say of Hellboy and that Marshall wants to walk the line between horror movie and comic book movie, which is pretty cool. I'm not gonna lie. Now, Marshall, for those of you guys who don't know, he has uh, directed films like Dog Soldiers, The Descent. He's also directed two episodes of Game of Thrones, two really great episodes of Game of Thrones, Blackwater and The Watchers of the Wall. Uh, which, if you ask any uh, hardcore Game of Thrones fan, they'll probably say those are two. Hopefully, they'll say those are two of their favorite episodes. I know those are two of my favorite episodes. Not because Neil Marshall just not just because Neil Marshall directed, because those are just really, really badass episodes. But um, he's also directed a bunch of other he's directed films like uh, Doomsday and Centurion, uh, which are just okay movies. They're not they're not as good as Dog Soldiers or The Descent in my book. But um, he's a really great director, and I think the radar rating if he ends up taking the job, he's only in talks. He's only in talks. If he ends up taking the job, I think that the rated R rating would really help uh, him because it won't hinder his work. Uh, obviously, he's worked in kind of rated R ratings uh, for pre- pre- pretty much his whole career, so that won't hinder any of his work and let him, you know, get some free range on that. Um, when it comes to David Harbour, uh, he's built himself up a pretty solid career. Uh, he's been in films like Black Mask, A Walk Among the Tombstones. He was in Brokeback Mountain. Uh, he's done TV work like Manhattan in the Newsroom. 
but of course everyone kind of knows him now for Stranger Things. He plays the the deputy, that's the sheriff, in that movie, uh, in that movie, in the in the, uh, in the Netflix series. So um, they're just in talks. Harbor's in talks to play Hellboy. Neil Marshall is in talks to direct. They have a script by um, uh, that's been co-written by Mike Magnola himself, uh, and they have a working title right now of Hellboy: Rise of the Blood Queen. Uh, so I'm torn here. I'm torn because on one hand, I would have loved to see Del Toro come back and direct whatever his version of Hellboy was with Ron Perlman. On the other, I like the pairing of Harbour and Marshall. Uh, like I mentioned, I'm a huge fan of Marshall and I'm a huge fan of David Harbour, and I think both of them will knock it out of the park. But I'm disappointed that we're not going to see Del Toro come back and direct Hellboy uh, with Ron Perlman. And this, of course, you know, there's, this has some a lot of people split uh, more in the disappointed uh, realm than the positive realm, at least from what I've seen. Um, but I don't know. I mean, I had a conversation with with a friend of mine uh, who you know just dislikes the whole concept of reboots. And to me, and we've talked about this very we've talked about this sporadically throughout the podcast that the idea of reboots doesn't bother me anymore. The idea of reboots and remakes don't bother me because it's going to happen. I mean, fighting it is just, it, it's an inevitable, it's, 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 it's inevitable. It's, it's going to happen. Things are going to get remade. Things are going to get rebooted. And one of the reasons is, yeah, one of the reasons he was saying, and I agree with him was it's, it's easy. It's easy money. Yes. Because brand recognition, Obviously, some fans know Hellboy, a lot, but a lot of fans don't know Hellboy. And some people didn't watch the old Hellboy movies, so they all they have to go off is this new Hellboy they're going to see. Maybe they'll learn that there were other Hellboy movies, and they'll probably go watch them. Hopefully, they go watch them. But if you've never seen a Hellboy movie, this will be your first kind of real exposure. And obviously, this is going to be very different. It's going to be rated R, and if Neil Marshall wants to go the direction... That you know that is being rumored. That's gonna go from it's gonna walk the line of horror movie and comic book movie and be more gruesome and violent. And if that's the case, then great. Then this is their version of Hellboy, which I appreciate. They're not gonna try to copy what Guillermo del Toro there. They're not gonna try to copy what anyone else has done, like the animated movies. They're doing their own thing, and that's the thing that I uh, that makes me somewhat okay with. Uh, reboots and remakes and reimaginings, whatever you want to call them, whatever stu- the studios want to call them, because at the end of the day, it's you. We know it's going to happen, and when it comes to a property like Hellboy, which is well known for many for many fans and many people, when it comes to that, part of me is part of me is upset. Like I mentioned, I'm torn because I, I wanted to see Hell uh, Del Toro's third Hellboy movie that he had talked about and Ron had talked about, and some of the other cast members have talked about. But on the other hand, if you get a good team behind this remake or reboot, then I, my feelings are torn and mixed because it's like, okay, cool, these are great people. Harbour and Marshall are great names. And I'm sure they'll do a tremendous job if they officially sign on. Again, they're still in talks. But when it comes to everything else, when it comes to like let's let you know let's talk about the go the let's talk about Ghostbusters. You know, everyone was you know all pissed off that the Ghostbusters were gonna be all women, and that movie still made a crap ton of money. People still shit on it, but it still made a crap ton of money. And honestly, for me, the Ghostbusters remake wasn't all that bad. It was entertaining. It was funny when it needed to be. Was it perfect? No. It was his own thing. I didn't like the fact that they, you know, all those forced cameos from the old cast, but, you know, whatever. So when it comes to Hellboy, again, I'm torn. I like the idea, I like the, I like the people they're bringing in. I don't like the idea that we won't get to see Del Toro's last film. I'm more upset about that. I'm not upset that they're rebooting Hellboy. I'm more upset the fact that we won't get to see Del Toro's last Hellboy movie. That's what I'm more upset about. All right, so that's uh, that. That was it. That's all the movie news albums that have come out, at least at the time of this recording. Uh, so you want to go uh, uh, again? Uh, there's some. There were some casting updates that I didn't talk about on the podcast. They're up on the Facebook page, facebook.com/slash/moviepits, or you can just go 
Click the link in the description slash show notes area for that. Uh, while you're down there, you can also go click my WordPress account. That's uh, Movies with chris.wordpress.com that's where you'll be uh, seeing some written reviews written by me uh, also some opinion pieces that are coming up I keep saying that and I never upload anything because uh, I keep changing my idea on what I want to write on but I do have a solid idea in mind uh, you'll probably see that sometime uh, in the next uh, month or so because I want to get it right so uh, there is that alright so let's uh, also right there also while you're there um, links to a bunch of other stuff uh, my personal uh, Instagram and Twitter page if you want to go follow me on there and um, and yeah all right so let's move on to this week's uh, releases we have three limited releases this week and two wide releases so the first limited release is absolutely anything a group of eccentric aliens that sounded weird uh, for me to say confer a human being with the power to do absolutely anything as an experiment the film stars Simon Pegg, Kate Beckinsale, Rob Riggle Eddie Izzard, and the voices of Terry Gilliam, John Cleese, and the late Robin Williams. This is one of the last movies that Robin Williams ended up doing. They're finally releasing it in a limited release, so if you have the chance to go watch it in theaters, uh, you can. The next limited release is uh, The Wall, directed by Doug Lyman. We talked about that early on the podcast. Two American soldiers are trapped by a sniper with only an unsteady wall between them. Aaron Tyler Johnson... Uh, and John Cena star in that film. Pretty cool. I've been I've been waiting to watch this movie for a while, and uh, finally getting chance finally gonna get a chance to see it this weekend, hopefully. And um, it looks great. It really does. It looks like a like a great little. Uh, it looks like a great small thriller, uh, which I which I really appreciate and really love to see. The final limited release this week is Low Riders. A young street artist in East Los Angeles is caught between his father's obsession with lowrider car culture, his ex-felon brother, and his need for self-expression. The film stars Gabriel Calavari, Theo Rossi, Tony Rolavari, uh, Melissa Bonoist, Eva Longoria, and Damian Bashir. This looks pretty cool. It's uh, not one of those movies that I'm going to be rushing out to go watch, but it is a movie that I am interested in, in watching. Uh, if you heard our summer movie, summer movie preview, oh my god, summer movie season preview podcast, it is last week too, uh, we talked about Lower Riders uh, quite a bit on that as well, uh, and that's something I really want to go watch, so there's a limited release for that, it's under a thousand theaters, so just be aware of that, uh, but it is one of the bigger limited releases this week, so there is, there is that. Uh, so let's move on to the wide releases. The first one is, of course, Snatched. When her boyfriend dumps her before her exotic vacation, a young woman pursues her ultra-cautious mother to travel with her to paradise with unexpected results. The film stars Amy Schumer, Goldie Hawn, Ike Barinholtz, and Wanda, uh, Wanda Sykes, and Christopher Maloney. Uh, the film looks okay. I mean, I, 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 this is another one we talked very much ab about in the... Uh, Summer Movie Season Preview Podcast. Uh, I'm not the biggest Amy Schumer fan. I'm not. And this movie, it doesn't look all that great. Uh, it doesn't look all that funny. But it is something that I'm going to go watch just to see if it's any good. Amy Schumer can be funny when she, I think she wants to. I, I don't find... Again, I'm not the biggest Amy Schumer fan. I think some of her stuff is funny. Not all of it. I know there's a huge uh, fan following for her. I'm not one of those. But we'll see... Uh, we'll see if this movie's any good. And the next wide release is King Arthur Legend of the Sword. Written and directed by Guy Ritchie, robbed of his birthright, Arthur comes up the hard way in the back alleys of his city, but once he pulls the sword from the stone, he is forced to acknowledge his true legacy, whether he likes it or not. The film stars Charlie Hunnam, Jude Law, Annabelle Wallace, Jamai Hansu, Aidan Gillen, and uh, Eric Bana. Uh, the film looks, I mean, we've talked about, we, this is another one we talked about uh, a lot on the Summer Movie Season Preview Podcast, and this movie I've actually been looking forward to. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a huge fan of Guy Ritchie, um, even some of his, you know, not so great stuff I'm still a fan of. Uh, the, Man, uh, the Man from UNCLE, which again, if you haven't watched The Man from UNCLE, very underappreciated when it first came out. It's a great film. Uh, Henry Cavill, Army Hammer, Alicia Van Kander, Elizabeth Dubecki, who just played Aisha, in uh, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Two, the Gold Lady. That's just it's just it's just a great movie. But uh, I'm I'm a huge fan of Guy Ritchie. I've been waiting for this movie since I saw the first trailer. I thought 
it didn't look that bad, and then the trailer just kept coming out, and I just, I, I don't know, I just, it just looks like a great little fun, you know, escape movie, if that's what you want to call it. Is it going to be any good? I don't know. Uh, some of the early reviews uh, haven't been that kind, but uh, again, those are reviews. Those are just reviewers. Let's put it that way. Those are just reviewers. Uh, I'm I, I am going to go watch this. I actually gonna go, I'm going to go watch this this weekend. Um, this is, again, a movie I've been looking forward to. Uh, I think the cast is pretty good. Um, Guy Ritchie, again, is good really good when he really wants to be. And Man from Uncle proved that. Uh, so uh, I hope that King Arthur: Legend of the Sword is 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 that is is as, is as good as I as I want it to be. All right. So once again, your releases this week: King Arthur: Legend of the Sword, Snatched are your wide releases, and your limited releases are absolutely anything: The Wall and Lowriders. All right. So let's move on to this week's box office predictions. Last week I predicted uh, that I was going to get the box office wrong. And that was the case, because that just, it happens. Uh, so my picks last week were Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, The Fate of the Furious at number, uh, or I'm sorry, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 at number 1, The Fate of the Furious at number 2, How to Be a Latin Lover at number 3, Bahu, uh, Bahu uh, Bali to the conclusion at number 4, and The Boss Baby at number 5. The reason why I chose uh, Bahu Bali at number 2 uh, the, or Bahu Bali to the conclusion number four is because that movie was number three at the box office two weeks ago, which no one predicted, uh, and I thought maybe maybe it will be a holdover. Nope, wasn't the case. Was not the case. And I even said that last week. That was not broken. probably be the case. Uh, so last week's the, the box office last week was actually Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Two and number one, The Fate of the Furious at number two, The Boss Baby at number three, How to Be a Land Lumber. How to Be a Latin Lover, what the hell did I just say? At number four, and Beauty and the Beast at number five. See? Beauty and the Beast, staying power. Uh, so my picks this week, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 is just going to swat away Snatched and King Arthur. Let's face it. It's, just, uh, the, you, you, it's almost like you shouldn't be releasing a movie after a Marvel movie. Because you know it's just going to be number two. The following weekend, so Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Two will be uh, will be number one again. I think Snatched will be number two. It is Amy Schumer. It is Goldie Hawn. They both have huge fan bases. It's Mother's Day weekend, so th- there is that. So Snatched number two, King Arthur Legend of the Sword. I think is going to be number three. I know it wasn't tracking well at the box office. A lot of people say it's going to bomb at the box office or be bomb. Uh, against its its big budget, but you know I don't, people don't care about that. People just want to go and watch a movie and be entertained, and it's got a pretty good cast. The TV spots haven't haven't been you know that bad. I think the TV spots are pretty pretty good. And if I hadn't known anything about King Arthur: Legend of the Sword and I saw a TV spot, I'd be like, I'll go check that out. So I think King Arthur: Legend of the Sword will be number three. Uh, if not, it'll probably be number four. Right now, at my number four, I have Fate of the Furious, and number five, I have The Boss Baby. So, but I'm I'm pretty I'm pretty sure that maybe King Arthur will probably surprise some people. It's not gonna make a shit ton of money, but it's gonna make money nonetheless. It's gonna make money nonetheless that it's not gonna be you know like out of the top five. Put it that way. Uh, so once again, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Two at number one, King uh, Snatch at number two, King Arthur Legend of, Legend of the Sword at number three, The Fate of the Furious at number four, and The Boss Baby at number five. Thank you guys so much for listening to the podcast. Uh, before I, I get to the to the goodbyes and thank yous, uh, next week is going to start uh, the two pod uh, two podcasts a week program. I guess that I don't know why I, that's something I just made up. I I, I I had nothing planned to to say afterwards. That's just something that came out of my mouth. Uh, so next week uh, I will be do I will be starting to do two podcasts a week. One will be at uh, the beginning of the week will be the review podcast. And at the end of the week, it will be this kind of podcast, the weekly roundup of news uh, with the movie releases coming out and the trailers and all that and all that good stuff. Uh, so uh, I, I mentioned this two weeks ago. I mentioned this last week in the podcast, and I mentioned it during the summer movie season podcast. Uh, obviously, it's a summer movie season. Big movies coming out. What better time to talk about, you know, and start doing reviews on these movies? The original plan for this podcast was always to have two podcasts a week and I actually did that at the very beginning I had two podcasts a week and then everything kind of just got uh 
you know, time kind of uh, got to me and other stuff and got to me and and I just couldn't do it anymore. So, but uh, but now I have the time and now I have the opportunity to do two podcasts a week. And I think it's I think it makes sense to have two podcasts a week, especially for these big summer movies that are coming out. Uh, so last week, you know, on the podcast, I actually put the Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Two review with the podcast. That won't be that will always be the case because. Um, I just happened to see Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Two on the Thursday before I recorded the podcast, so uh, there was that. But uh, yeah, next week you'll have two podcasts. You'll have the review podcast. I will be reviewing uh, King Arthur: Legend of the Sword and Snatched, and maybe The Wall. I haven't decided. Uh, I don't know exactly what my third movie. I am going to go watch three movies this weekend. Just putting that out there. Uh, but uh, I don't know what. But I don't know what that third movie will be. Hopefully, it's The Wall. But. Um, Whatever the case, just know King Arthur, Legend of the Sword, and Snatched will be uh, the movies that I will be reviewing next week on uh, the review podcast that will be coming out either Monday or Tuesday. I'm not sure. I'm aiming for Monday. I just don't know if it will be on Monday, but just be aware uh, that there will be two podcasts a week. Uh, and then, of course, next week, at the end of the week, it will be this you know podcast that we're doing, the weekly roundup of, uh, of movie news. And that would be pretty much the case for pretty much almost the entire summer. Uh, not maybe not maybe not all <laughs> summer, but at least um, at least a good chunk of the summer will be uh, will be having two podcasts a week, one review and one weekly roundup of news, like we always do. So uh, so yeah, so thank you guys so much for listening to the podcast this week. Uh, you guys have been great. Uh, it's going to be another late podcast. I can feel it. I've, I've been I've recorded this a little later than I wanted to, but. Um, Thank you guys so much for listening anyway. You guys are great. You guys are awesome. I love you guys. You guys are the real MVPs of this podcast. So yeah, uh, thank you guys so much for listening to the podcast this week. Let me know what your favorite news item was. Let me know what movie you're looking forward to the most. Uh, and if for whatever reason you listen to this podcast over the weekend, uh, what movie did you enjoy the most this weekend as well? Uh, so yeah. That's it, guys. That's all I got for you guys. Check out the links in the description slash show notes area for links to my Twitter, my Instagram, to the Facebook page, the movie news. Uh, I'm sorry, to the move to the movie reviews, uh, to the written movie reviews site. That's what I'm trying to say. I can't talk now. I honestly can't talk now. Uh, but uh, but yeah, go check those out and um, let me know what you guys think of uh, the movie news this week. We'll love to hear from you guys if uh, you guys get the chance. So, thank you guys so much. Once more, have a good, fun, safe weekend this week. And as always, go watch some movies. Woo-hoo! Yeah! Give it up! Movies!